Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. We're still in Angren, but that won't take long anymore, I think, because uh, we're gonna try and leave Isgit today. I'm not sure if we'll be able to, but uh, heading out of Gurnikora's uh, lair is now, of course, pretty easy since she's burning at the stake. But what else does Iskid have in store for us? And will we get into contact with the Geralt storyline as well or not? The Geralt storyline from the books. Because I've been waiting for that and up until now nothing has happened. But we still have a lot of water in our way. Lettere and Key found Drogovit, Grand Royal Huntsman to Ragbar, Lord of Temeria, Mahakam and the Pontar. My lord, I offer you my sincerest apologies. I've failed in my task, we were forced to cease felling. We simply lack the necessary labor. Men are falling like flies, dying from disease and festering wounds. We've abandoned camp. I've sent items of the greatest worth to Vizima in locked chests. However, I will not be returning to the capital as I am in no condition to travel. I have a wound on my leg and rot has already set in. It has been a true honor to serve under your command. So we left something around here. And we just got the key. One day, the quartermaster approached with news to report. Alas, bad news. Your Grace, our food stocks have near run out. And about villages, folk have naught to spare, not even to trade. The Queen dispatched small groups of scouts. They were to scour the countryside for hunting camps, beekeepers, charcoal burners, any souls willing to trade food for coin or goods. The first scouts came back around dusk. Oh, wow. The last three detachments returned not at all. At first, Meave suspected they'd fallen prey to monsters, the beastly or Nilfgaardian kind. Later, she learned the men had left naught of their belongings behind. She'd been soft-hearted toward deserters. This lot decided they, too, would give it a try. That night, Meave lay still but sleepless. Beneath thin covers, she was cold, hungry, Irate. So that was quite a bit of resources. We lost, I think, a thousand gold, five hundred wood, and twenty soldiers, which is something I could deal with. Oh, that is a wisp. That's a will of the wisp if I've ever seen one. Um. So we still have one more little area before we, well, get to this bridge. I like the side of a bridge. We'll see. We'll see. We'll just go ahead. Towering alders grow thick in Isgith, their crowns weaving an expansive canopy that obscures the sky. Any sunbeams to slip through this twisted thicket scatter in the milky mist below. Thus the marsh abides in a state of perpetual twilight, wherein a sense of time and direction are easily lost. As the force moved along, a glow appeared in the trees. The Lyrians squinted, their mouths agape in wonder. An orb hung over the water, pulsating, humming. It circled the soldiers, darted off a distance, then hovered as if waiting. A will of the wisp, that is, whispered one of the footmen. I believe it's keen to show us something. What? Why would that be showing? Usually that's a trap. A will of the wisp is never good. Uh, well, we'll follow him because we want we want to get past it, and I don't know if I can go past it if we ignore the phenomenon. And I'm always curious about things like that. Eve knew the wisp could prove treacherous, lead them into a trap. Nonetheless, she followed, though not entirely certain why. Her soldiers seemed eager, she sensed they approved. Yet she was also simply curious. We follow it. Carefully. Weapons at the ready. Okay. So, it is actually allowing us true now so this allows us to move forward which is nice what else is here can we get nope not on that patch of water there's the rest of the will of the wisp and there's water around here as well more arakasses that's the normal battle and that's the will of the wisp so chronologically we should first check out the will of the wisp and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, hello, little light. As the wisp led the Lyrians down a narrow, winding path, Meave surveyed her surroundings warily. Beads of sweat emerged upon her brow. 
but her fears in the end proved unfounded. For at the path's end, the troops found what appeared to be a caravan's remains. Its wagons, rot-eaten, half buried in the bog, had sat there for decades, perhaps longer. Despite this, gilded panels and scraps of silver-threaded fabric showed they'd once been rather ornate. Ooh, so we got led to treasure? Inside the wagons, the soldiers discovered many steel crates. Rust-covered but intact, they contained truly dazzling treasures. Sacks bulging with gold coin, pearl-encrusted goblets, exotic velvets and silks in beads. Blimey, the sheer amount. In here, of all places. A footman muttered under his breath. Okay, that is weird. Meave quickly pieced it all together. She too had once ridden in such a caravan, splendid and laden with gold, when she'd left her home to marry. The rest of the story was not difficult to divine. This was a maiden's dowry. She and her retinue lost their way. Isgith proved their grave, unbeknownst to any other. Okay. So there we go, the Witcher again playing with our assumptions the there. Circled Meave's party, blinked several times, then faded into thin air. Goodbye. The resumed their march, and all seemed in order. Seemed, for soon several footmen were discovered to be gone. Greed had been their ruin. They'd grabbed too much. The loot had weighed them down, and the marsh had embraced them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then, never mind. Um, well, then, 12 soldiers gone again, but we got, well, more than our losses back from before, which is great. And I don't mind that a few of our uh, soldiers actually got lost. They started deserting anyway. Um, Arakas, an Arakas. That's, let's fight this thing. Come out wherever you are. A moss-covered boulder protruded from the green, fetid water. The Lyrians breathed a cautious sigh of relief, for perhaps dry land was finally close at hand. However, when they drew closer, they discovered it was no stone at all, but the shell of a monstrous Arakas behemoth. So a standard battle? Let's uh, go through this rather quickly. So we're going all out on the uh, Skellige front here. So a gigantic Arakas. Whenever an Arakas appears, strengthen self by one. And the Arakas behemoth spawn an Arakas hatchling. So that's probably going to be the same as a drone, I suppose. So first things first, let's get the disgraced brawler on the field. May disgrace hands here. And, and the turn. Whenever this unit survives an attack, spawn two Arakas hatchlings. But that is an overgrown Arakas. We'll see how that works. So let's put the Aratusa adapt oh, down oh, Lady Margarita told and spawn us more of those disgraced brawlers. Like this. Then we can use the disgraced brawler. And they spawn two Arakas hatchlings. Okay, that's fine. I want to fill out the field with all of, but as much as possible. So then we can use Meave to pull back the Disgraced Brawler, put it in the deck. A Rivian Onager and Barnabas. So Rivian Onager on the back row. And Barnabas over here. I think you really like this one. Play a random bronze unit from each deck. Okay. So we get. Another one of those brawlers. <laughs> and the overgrown Arakas. So whenever this unit survives... An okay, so he gets boosted whenever an Arakas appears. This is kind of not come in handy, I think. This do, do those hatchlings do anything? No. But I can damage the gigantic Arakas and try and take it out. Um, that's basically it. Okay, so next up should probably be the blood card. Blood card is gonna. Hmm. So we have the Wagenberg, Xavier, and Egg. Probably should put Egg out there. Yeah, let's get Egg and the Lyrian Blacksmith. So Egg is gonna do 9 damage. 
a nine damage is nine enough to help. almost kill that Arakas dude. And then no the blood cards. And I don't have damage. Okay, let's just go with the war wagon and the Rivian sapper. The rest goes into the graveyards. And we play the war wagon over God here. And the Rivian sapper destroys the gigantic Arakas. And all of our light infantry units. And the gigantic Arakas itself. There we go. And then we could technically also destroy... Hmm. Does it spawn that every time? Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, might as well kill it now. And then like this. End the turn. And we get a pass. Which is fine, I suppose. We'll pass as well. There we go, won the first round. Now, I think we need at least one drummer for this to work properly. So let's get rid of the harsh duke. Yeah, there we go. Luckily we got one drummer with six armor for some reason. Six armor is a lot. Well, two on top of the base Mom's armor and the base armor is... You can see that over here. Uh, well, let's end the turn. Okay, then we can play the Pitfall Trap and use the Regiment Drummer to get another Damn! Warrior on the field and the turn. Then Meave's ability on the Rivian Sapper and then we can use Reinforcements to get all our disgraced brawlers out of the deck, which are now immensely powerful. And then the question is either Arnjolf or Dagur. I think Arnjolf might actually be the better choice in this case. Yeah, Arnjolf. So reinforcements for the disgraced brawler. Uh, we get a one, two, three, four. Five. And Arnold in the back. Wanna know why I got my scar? Then we can use the forager over here. Like this. I'm gonna use him in a second. And then the turn. Train all enemies in a row by one, but that's not gonna annoy us too much, I think. Because now we can use the Disgraced Brawlers to start dealing some damage. Uh, might as well do this. Then do uh, this. And just keep damaging all those guys by tree. This and this. The, this and this. Then we use Arnold the Patricide on the bear, because it's the most annoying one. Then the Forager, boosting all our units by four. And two more charges on the Rivian Onager, so that takes out that hatchling. Then we can give the Lyrian Harshduk, use the Lyrian Harshduk to give us more charges. Kill these two. More boosts. Um, uh, 106 power <laughs> Porridge. And then four charges to kill one of the Ekimaras. There we go. Spring cleaning, they call that. And we reduce the number of units on that row, so that's fine. Now we can use Arnulf again to do, what is it, seven damage at this point? Yeah. Use me school down. And get hmm, the Onager out. Play the Onager again, or play Dagger Two Blades. That's gonna be overpowered. Um, ah, you know what? Why not? So Dagger Two Blades and the Disgraced Warrior, like this. On her 
And that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven units. Just enough. Three hundred and seventy-nine points. <laughs> Scaliger is ridiculous. Oh. Well, that was something. I do like. I do like the Scaligers. That was amazing. So there we go, all the Arakas loot we can want, and that is, I think, it. We did get another report. Sultan Parchment, document found on a sunken wagon. Our fondest congratulations, we eagerly await the day our family shall be bound by a new member. Let these humble gifts help with, may the bride know, but happiness and with regards and best wishes. So that's from the, the wagon where we got the treasure from, the dowry from. A sad story indeed, but that means that we're almost out of Isgit. I am going to use the scouts once more to see if we can't find anything. There's apparently a few more resources we haven't picked up. But there's also one more region that we haven't checked out yet. This street. Is that accessible from here, maybe? Oh. And we can't fast travel to that anymore because it's on the other side. That must have been where that final chest was. I didn't see that that might be accessible. Okay. I thought it was going to be accessible from here. But apparently not. So, but we do see the chests, which is good. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So heading north. Uh, we're going to have to leave this area with sadly one chest unopened. So if we go onto the water, there it is. Oh, and there's another puzzle battle over there as well. There we go, open that up. Dagu 2 Blades, the animated card. Lovely, because I like his effect in Gwent as well. And then this puzzle battle. A cave. A Nickers adventure. Oh, Nickers is by and large a polite dog who heals shakes paws and on good days even sits when instructed to do so, especially when his ears are given a good scratching beforehand. One day, however, Nickers strayed from the Lyrian retinue, lured by an appetizing scent. The wafting aroma led him to a cavern from which not a single light escaped. To enter, or not? He pondered it for a moment, licking his snout and tilting his head. In the end, he decided that the world belongs to the brave. He then let out two quick barks and leapt into the dark. Help Nickers reach the end of the cave without turning back and collecting all soup and wine along the way. Use your leader's ability. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. Who's the leader? Gascon is the leader. Okay. Nickers has no ability. So we need to collect all bones and soup along the way. And we get shadows in our way as well. Move Nickers to an adjacent vertical or horizontal position. And all these things don't have an ability. Can I just play Nickers? Wait, what does the wine do? No ability as well. So I need to collect all soup and wine along the way without turning back. Okay, and what is turning back? Uh, okay. So there we have knickers. Then, to an adjacent vertical or horizontal position. Like this then? Aha. Ah, okay. Fine. So we don't have much choices here, so let's go up. And we collected soup. And I'm gonna have to be careful, I think. Uh, so to the right, that's no other option. Then... Down... Yeah, to the right. And then up instead of down. And then to the right. I've played the witness. I know how to do this. This is basically the witness. Like this. And then we go down. Yeah. Down, down, and then to the left. Yeah, like that. Come on, Nekus. You can do it. And the soup. Why is there soup in a cave? 
Why is there wine in a cave? I don't know. But we're almost there. We're going right now. So we don't want to hit a shadow. It's just as simple as that. Now more steel bones. I don't know what the difference is between normal bones and steel bones. Probably steel bones as in bones that Nickers wouldn't want to eat. But Nickers is a good boy. And he almost has everything now. I don't need to collect every bone, I suppose. Just all the soup and all the wine. There we go. Thank you, Gascon, for helping Nickers out. So there we go. Quick puzzle before we leave. Let's get... I don't know. I don't think we, <laughs> we even got anything from that. That was stupid. Um, okay. So that means we can probably leave. We have one more note to support. Don't know if that shows us anything. I think I'm not even going to go back for any resources. I don't think I even can go back for any resources. I think we left that alone. I'm pretty sure we did. And the rest of the resources I can actually get to. Except for that one, probably. So let's go across the bridge. Okay. What happened? We zoomed. In evading Nilfgaard's banners, Meave led her force into Angren's wildest reaches. The foe could not attack the Lyrians there, yet hazards of another sort befell them. One day, they reached a quagmire too vast and deep to ford. So the Queen summoned her engineer, Xavier, and called on him to build a makeshift bridge. By nightfall, he had drawn up plans. We shall start by laying abutments, then drive piles into the mire. Hmm. The depth? We dropped plumb lines. Four L's. Sooner by the plans, Meave did not see as Xavier slipped a line off Okay. By the time she felt it on her throat, she feared it might be too late. What the hell? I long awaited this moment when we would be alone. What the fuck? You die now, Majesty. And with you dies Lyrius, Rivius, the whole North will to resist. Hail, Ketzer. Hail. Thank you, Gascon. Was the Nilfgaardian rallying cry in Xavier's throat. At the last instant, Gascon and Reynard rushed in to save the warrior queen. And thus proved their loyalty beyond any doubt. What the hell? Your grace. Your grace. There was no answer. But Reynard could hear her breathe. Meave would live. Holy shit, did we it just was several hours survive later a possible Meave ending? came to. She opened her eyes, then Gascon and Reynard helped her to her feet. Are you fucking kidding me? So if you didn't let... Wow, if you let Reynard or Ga and Gascon out of your army, then Meave would have died right here. What the hell was Xavier's problem all of a sudden? Yeah, ob obviously, by Xavier. Careful, your majesty. What? I should have been more careful earlier. That was a plot twist. Damn it. If you two hadn't... No need for words. You needn't mention it. I couldn't disagree more. We're due for a long conversation. First of all, I owe you thanks. Second, my trust in you both has been heavily tarnished. I believe that goes without saying. Yet today you proved beyond all doubt that I can rely on you. So I thank you. To serve under your banner, Majesty, it is an honor. Reynard Odo Plus. Ooh. Likely I'd have put it differently, but Reynard seems to have the right idea. <laughs> Very well. And Gascon Plus? We've reassured ourselves of admiration for one another enough. We've matters to which we must attend. I trust as I lay there dead to the world, you did not sit about with your thumbs up your bums. Have you at least learned why Xavier betrayed us, sided with the Empire? In a manner of speaking. Yes. Your Grace, the rogue who lunged at you, in truth, was one Gwalter et Lwinoch, a Nilfgaardian spy. Oh. That explains... Oh. Does that explain... Because his card... Wasn't his card... Didn't his card have him show a rope in his hand? Um, how... How... Yeah, he saved our lives in Mahakam. Just a moment, that makes no sense. He saved my life in Mahakam, on the bridge. He did, 
for he had to. In one of the letters we found, Et Dahi orders Gwalter to watch over Elder in Chief Hoog. Ah. The Scoia'tael in the mountains were sent there by Nilfgaard to recruit dwarves, but their commander, the Vixen, they feared she'd attack Bruva himself, something Eb Dahi wished to avoid. Naturally. For someone else could seize power, someone not so neutrally inclined. Someone more likely to aid me, gods forbid. Okay, and how did you ascertain this? Probably because of those letters he was mentioned. This discovery you made how? We found in his toolbox a concealed compartment, letters inside. Though encrypted, we managed to decipher them. They were the Grey Rider, for you to read. A swine. An Imperial spy in my ranks this whole time. But to wait so long to strike, why? He'd only just received the order. Another letter in the box, signed by General Eb Dahi, stated, To Gwalter Eb Luinoch. Eliminate M at first opportunity. Honorless bastards. They'll stop at Nout. Now, Meave, you'll gain Nout by getting riled. No sense to it. This is good news, in fact. Is that so? Think. Ep Dahi had a spy in our midst. He knew our movements, had his eye on us, his finger on the pulse. He knew our plans, who we parlayed with, and yet he didn't order your assassination. For you posed no threat. Well, clearly so much changed. Congratulations. Nilfgaard fears you now. And rightly so. Okay, and indeed, what about his horrible scar? But we found him in the rubble at Rosberg, midst the ashes. Precisely what placed him beyond suspicion. We suspect Walter enlisted with the Adanians some years past, infiltrated that army. He had a hand in Rosberg's defense. Then, when the time was right, he lent that same hand to its demise. Caused an explosion that tore a hole through its walls. It worked, but at a price. He suffered severe burns. If not for our medics, he'd have... Stop. So it was not elves who brought about the fort's fall as he claimed. A filthy lie to stoke the fires of racial hatred. To stir conflict and chaos and rage that would make the realm of Edurn waver and fall. If we're to judge by Rayla's actions, he was rather successful. Indeed. Bastard. Yet even so badly hurt in such pain, not for a moment did he drop his mama's act. I've heard much of Nilfgaardian spies, Your Grace. They're trained from childhood, face constant indoctrination. They do anything for the Emperor, anything and everything. As soon as Gwalter spotted a chance to join our ranks, to be at your side, he took it, exploited it ably. Okay. So traitors, traitors all to around. To be brief, I've traitors all about me. Your Grace, you resent our actions, I understand, but... You, Willem, the Cad Coldwell, Gascon, Gabor, finally Xavier, tell me how. How am I to trust anyone? You can't. Thank you, Gascon. Amongst all the realms in the north, you're Nilfgaard's sole rival. One remaining threat. All other rulers, either soundly defeated and enchained, or tails tween their legs, they've donned Nilfgaard's leash. What does that mean for us? Where are we heading now? Because we're pretty much at the end of the game, I suppose. Because this is where the game could have ended, I suppose. If Xavier was successful, if Gascon or Reynard wouldn't have been here, we would have been dead. The Black Clads will do all to destroy you, if not upon the field, then in secret, with an assassin and a quick, sharp blade. What's left? Prayer. Melitale too is sure to turn and take North Guardian gold sooner or later. Ugh. We've talked enough. We must form up, move on. Majesty, you ought to rest. Your stand swaying. Your step can't be too sure. Only my horse needs step true. Maeve, you've just about had the life chopped out of you. No time to play the hero. I'm not, Gascon. Quite the opposite, actually. These damn swamps, they terrify me. I wish to get the hell out and never, ever look back. The Aruga lies near. I sent scouts ahead. They've secured a barge. We can sail to Red Lobindon. Splendid. Sound the horns. We march. There's one more thing that definitely needs to happen. And I know that's also already happened in the books before Geralt encounters Meeves. 
So I'm not going to spoil, of course, what that is. But if you've looked at some of the title screens for Chrome Breaker, you kind of know what it is. But uh, without further ado, let's head north. And there's that's that's one of our soldiers. That's probably the end. Yeah, we're right at the end now. Let's grab this final batch of resources and check this guy out. So eight out of nine golden chests found. Wait, wait, what does that mean? Orders for Zavia. Let's read that as well. Eliminate them at the first opportunity. She has ceased to be useful, and it is time to useful. It is time to put the Legion guerrillas to sleep before they present a true danger to the Empire. Once you've carried out your orders, go to the Rivia Palace dressed as a beggar. There you shall receive further instructions. Okay, but I don't think I have a map left, right? No, I've done all the maps. So, I don't know. That's the wrong button. That's the wrong button. Uh, I don't know... What else is left then? No, I've sent out scouts, so there's nothing left here anymore. The only place I couldn't access was over here, and that might actually be the chest that we're missing. I'm not sure. I mean, there's nothing else we can do. Still stays at 8 out of 9, so we're gonna head through. And, uh... Maybe finish this. There we go, so 7 hours and 49 minutes. Oh, so that's cumulative, that has to be cumulative. So 10 quests, 8 puzzles, 11 standard battles, and 8 out of 9 chests found. Nothing we can do about that last one, but uh, let's continue. Sandflies and mosquitoes blanketed Meave's face and neck. She did not bother to brush them away. She'd been in Angren long enough to know more would come in their place. Your Majesty. Raynard called from behind. Our scouts have returned, with a large force of blacklads on our tail, infantry and horsemen, and they draw nearer. Blast! Meave wiped away the sweaty hair stuck to her brow. What say you, Reynard? Shall we give them a fight? We were a few miles from the river where a barge awaits. It makes no sense to battle now. So before we move on, sad I have to do this, but I uh, kind of lost track of time there. But I'm going to take a little break because otherwise this episode is going to go for way too long if there's a battle next. Uh, so thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And when we get back, we're just going to continue on with this. So thank you guys enormously for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.